Today, we're looking at the only two things you have to figure out for your 3D printer. I'm Richard, this is 3 Printing for Money. Let's get down to business. These two points alone account for about 90% of the problems in your 3D printer. If you're chasing the perfect print, maybe you got the fear that you need more upgrades, so you start to upgrade and upgrade and upgrade until you spend several hundred bucks and slowly molds and pieces. Are they really necessary? Truth is, you don't need a fancy setup. You don't need the last firmware release. You don't need the last dual, triple, quadruple, direct drive extruder for your 3D printer. You don't need a MITI 60 watt heat cartridge. And you don't need linear rails. You don't need a witcher to make a strange ritual. You don't need a lot of stuff. What you want is a printer that prints 24 seven with very low issues and very low problems. To print correctly and stress-free, you will need to figure out only two things that once figured it out and got on point, your printing experience will be downhill. The first thing you have to figure out is first layer adhesion. First layer adhesion is so crucial that without it, you won't be literally able to print. Ever. You can have the most awesome setup, but no first layer adhesion, no print. Simple. Guys, even if you got almost right, it's not enough. You need it on spot. You can't be in a multiple day print and discover that your part is starting to warp and start to apply tape like crazy to make it stick. Been there, done that. So stop wasting time, money, and plenty of headaches and figure out your first layer adhesion. First layer adhesion can be caused by a tons of reason. Bed too cold, nozzle too cold, bed not leveled, extruder carriage not well trammed to the build plate, dirty build plate, different material residue on the build plate, too fast first layer, nozzle too close, nozzle too far, plenty of reasons. How to increase first layer adhesion? My personal first choice will be to swap what you have and put a spring steel pay-cutted bed. It makes very, very easy to release prints. It's awesome. Second choice will be a glass bed. How to fix your bed alignment can be an argument for an entire video, but usually is a combination of bed flatness, gantry tramming, and the extruded distance from the build plate. Talking about extruder, this makes point number two get your extruder calibrated. What do I mean with calibrated? I mean to tune your extruder temperature and E-steps values. Finding the proper E-steps values is the holy grail to eliminate under-extrusion and over-extrusion. A print with gaps, holes, or blobs requires so much post-processing as sanding, filling, priming, painting, polishing, that sometimes it is faster to redo directly the print. Setting E-steps is a 10-minute task with a caliper, and it's so easy that I wonder why so many manufacturers don't set up it correctly. Lazy maybe? I don't know. Once that you set up correctly the E-steps values and save them to EEPROM, the next step will be to find the proper temperature for each filament you use. Not having the right temperature will cause blobs, poor bridging, loss in detail, nozzle clogs, extruder jams, tons of stringing. The perfect extruding temperature depends from your particular setup ambient temperature, humidity, and moss that can affect the final result. To find the right temperature, invest 10 grams of filament and a little bit more than an hour to print a temperature tower. On Thingiverse, you can find many of them. I'll leave some links in the description. When you combine proper E-step values that depend on the motor gear setup and extrusion temperatures that depend from the nozzle, the cooling, the heat block, with a proper leveled bed, you will have a bulletproof setup for flawless 3D printing. How does these two points relate to 3D printing money? When 3D printing around the clock, you don't have the time to incur in problems and you want to bring down the time wasted to a minimum. And after you have to print, you want to forget about it and make the machine do its job so you can do other things. 
If you want to know more about how to make money with 3D printers, I wrote a book where in over 150 pages I condensed my experience and many years of 3D printing with tips and tricks you can use to improve your 3D printing journey. Download the ebook today from Amazon and start applying all the tricks for scaling to another level your 3D printing business. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.